Hey, this is Rashad Evans, and you listen to MMA Fight Corner. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from Las Vegas, with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! go. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You are here with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Vaughn. And we have a show that starts the new year off the right way by bringing in some really cool guests. Joining us shortly is Stephen Kofor, founder of the Coalition to Legalize MMA in New York. And we're also going to be welcoming in Beck Hyatt later in the show. Uh, Beck's going to be fighting on Invicta 4's main event this Saturday, plus all the latest MMA news and gossip and so much more. But first... Let's start with a review of UFC 155. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know by now how Cain Velasquez dominated Junior Dos Santos for five rounds last Saturday night. And I'm not trying to sound like a know-it-all or anything like that, but I did say if the fight made it past the first round, okay, that it would go the distance, and it did. I I just didn't know that it would go the distance in such a dominating fashion the way it did. I I have to say I was completely shocked. Um, When you saw... Kane not only handled Junior with the wrestling, but in the striking department too, and just it was utter domination for five rounds. Hands down, man, he 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 just put a whooping on him. He did. He put an absolute whooping. And listen, you know, big ups to Junior Dos Santos. He showed a lot of heart. He was not going down without a fight. But it wasn't much of a fight. It was just a one-sided beat, and it really was. You know, in hindsight it was, but when you're watching it, you're not thinking that. You're thinking any minute this guy gets to his feet and he can land that punch. So in hindsight it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was a, a one-sided ass whooping, and, 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 uh, and Kane was swinging the stick. But watching it, Junior was always in the fight. You're always waiting, you know. And big ups to Junior. I'll tell you what. We've never seen him on the ground. We've never seen him have to use his uh, – we've seen him have great take down the fence, which he illustrated here again. Because yep. he stuffed a, 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 a ton of shots. But more than that, he got up to his feet. Every single takedown, he got up to his feet. So he showed he showed great skill at getting up to his feet and dealing with the wrestling of Kane. I think he just didn't expect Kane to strike as well. I think he had he expected Kane to come out there, try to wrestle him the whole fight, not really try to throw punches, because his style of defense was I'll use my head movement, kind of slip and shoulder roll of punches if they come, which he didn't look like they he, they anticipated them coming, and I'll keep my hands low so I can get those underhooks when he does shoot. And as we saw, that didn't pay dividends for him because he, he looked like he looked like he got hit with about thirty pillowcases stuffed with <laughs> bars of soap. You know, what I mean? he that was like, a cold you know, red. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He took a cold red exactly. Um, but um, Kane, man, he looked amazing. He looked like uh, the the true evolved heavyweight mixed martial artist. Now we had talked before that this wasn't going to be their second time. It wouldn't be their last. That we know that these two these two guys are so far ahead, the rest of everybody else in the heavyweight division, that they're bound to meet two, maybe even three more times. I mean, this may be, you know, Junior versus Kane six or seven, we may see one day. You never know. But who do you think leading into because you know that they're gonna have a rematch. I I know Junior is demanding an immediate rematch. Probably won't happen because Dana had said that at the press conference the other night that uh, depending on what happens with Bigfoot and Alistair, that if Alistair were to win that, Alistair would get the title shot against Kane. Junior would get another fight, and if he wins, then maybe the title shot. But um, you know, who has the advantage? Say say it does happen and they do rematch. You know, Junior knocked out Kane in a minute, but that was an injured Kane and an injured Junior. So it's like, um, but then you watch the second fight, and it was domination for five rounds. Who has the upper hand going into the third fight? Do you fight? think Cain Velasquez comes in as as uh, motivated as he did in this fight? And that's what I thought was going to be a, a really big factor. But not only that, he really came in and dominated in this fight. I, I see it going not the, exactly the same way, but I see it going very closely to the last fight we just saw. No, I disagree 100%. Of course I mean, you do. No, <laughs> no, I mean, look, when you got a guy with the ability to end – 
a fight at any second with just a touch of his fist to the to the little tip of your chin. That man is always in the fight. Junior made some mistakes in this fight. His his defense, his game plan was off. He looked sluggish. He looked slow. He put on a lot of he put on a lot of muscle for this fight. You could see it. He was just bigger and stronger. And I think that was in anticipation of dealing with the wrestling game. But Junior's effectiveness as a heavyweight is because what is what do you hear Joe Rogan saying? Man, he's so light on his toes. He moves like a lightweight. He didn't move like a lightweight. He moved like a slow plodding heavyweight who was just throwing one big punch. There was no quick jab, no feints, no no, no anything light, no anything explosive. It was all this very, you know, and I, and I think Junior returning to that will pay dividends in a rematch. Another thing, though, is that is that Kane, Kane can put him on his back at any time, but Junior showed he can get up at any time, which he's going to carry He's gonna carry that confidence over into the rematch, and he's going to know that if he puts me on, I can get up. If I'm lighter and quicker, I can find that chin. You know, so I think I think no matter what happens, if they do when they do, let me preface that when they do fight again, both guys are equally in this fight. I have one last question about this fight, and this goes back to Kane losing his title on the first offense. Junior, uh, he didn't lose it on the first offense because he beat Frank, but that was you know a, a fight that was you know. Last minute of replacement, you knew that Frank wasn't going to win that fight. But, uh, you know, is there too much publicity? Are these guys doing too much? You're saying Junior looks slow. Is he doing too much in between training, going on all these interviews, doing the media thing? You saw it, it happened with Kane. Kane, I remember when he was getting ready to fight Junior for the very first time, you saw he was in Mexico one day, he was uh, you know, in Texas the next day, and then the next day he's in California, and he's all over the place doing these media whirlwind tours. Could that play a factor? I don't think that's why Junior looks slow. And well, yes, yes, that can always play a factor. But that, that's 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 the nature of the beast, man. That's the game you're playing. You're you're, you're a superstar in in the most elite f- fighting sporting event in the world, which is really hard to be a superstar in this sport. You know, it's not like you're a rock star. You don't get to go out and live this lavish life. Your nose like to the grind no, all the, the grind. time. You're either training or you're doing PR. But I think that the slowness and the sluggishness had less to do with the PR stuff and, and, and you know, doing interviews and, and shaking babies, kissing hands and that whole nine yards. And I think it had to do with they put on some size. He didn't look chubby with exercise. He didn't look sluggish because he was out of shape. He looked like he beefed up. They wanted to get bigger and stronger so they could kind of manhandle Kane in a wrestling fight. And that was a, that was a mistake. That didn't pay off well for him. I think also that when he got rocked, dropped in the first round with that punch, I think that took him out. I don't think he got his legs back until almost the fourth round. Yeah, he was never the same. And so the combination of of just being too big, too strong, losing some of that speed and explosiveness, and then getting rocked like that, I think that set him back. Who do you think Junior faces next? Good call. Country's on a couple fight win streak. They could do a rematch there. I'd like to see a rematch with that. Oh, Oh, I know who. Um... Uh, Drysdale and John Lesio had a had a kid. It would look like this. Uh, what's his name? Um, come on, you know who I'm talking about. Sweden, Team Sweden, just beat Shogun. I can't even think. Gustafsson. Uh, Gustafsson. Gustafsson. Tell me though, if you You're merge right. Drysdale and John Lesio, Chris, Chris Gustafsson. <laughs> yeah, if you merge those two, they look the same. They, that that. But if, Gustafsson's only a two oh five er. I mean, oh, that's right, a, that's yeah. Right. So I mean, he's, that's the thing. That guy's so big that a lot of people think that he's a heavyweight, but to think that he's a two oh five er. But I, who? Struve? <laughs> he, he already beat Struve. He knocked Don't him out. Daniel uh, Cormier. That could be a welcome back fight for DC. But I don't think DC now, with Kane retaining the belt, I don't think he's going to come Drop over down, as heavyweight. Go, yeah. as, to go down to 205 and maybe uh, try he to actually, shoot. He actually hinted uh, to us that, that if it all depends on what happens with Kane. If Kane gets the belt, then I'm not going to be fighting as a heavyweight because I, I want the belt and I'm not going to fight my teammate. Well, yeah, that actually came up during the press conference. Dana had said that he spoke to both of them beforehand. And apparently they had both said that if Kane were to win and Daniel comes over as a heavyweight, if it was for the belt, that the two of them would fight. But afterwards, during the press conference, Kane said, no, that is not the case. We're not yeah. fighting. So, you know, I, I just when are we going to realize that this is an individual sport? I, really? Well, I mean, yes, you're only as strong as the team behind when you. When every guy starts it, training on his own. But that, <laughs> like, that's going to have to be the case one day. Or we miss out on such great fights because of it. We really do. You know what, though? I mean, I think Dana White, I've been saying this for a long time. He just went out and said that 
MMA does need to go the route of boxing when it comes to preparing for big fights. You know, make it around the fighter and around his fight and less about a whole team getting, getting you know, ready for mm-hmm. fights. I think that's true. But John Fitch actually just did a great interview, and he was saying you kind of have to have a hybrid of that because you do need a team. You can do that in boxing, but you can't really do that with the money in boxing and the way boxing gyms are set up. They're set up differently. You know, you don't come in there and pay a couple hundred dollars, uh, $150 to be a month of a boxing gym. It's usually 20 30 bucks. you know. They make their money from their pro fighters. Um, but, you know, I, I think with needing wrestling partners and jiu-jitsu partners and all these different coaches, it's so hard to have, uh, unless you're in the top, top elite tier making the millions of dollars, it's so hard to, to build a camp like that. Yeah, I know. That's true. But it's also hard to yeah. get to that level if you're not going to accept fights. You, know, you can't <laughs> yeah, exactly. be on that superstar exactly. level true. if you're turning down fights. True. All right, let's, let's switch gears a little bit here. We'll come back to UFC 155 talk in a few minutes. But right now we have an interview with uh, Stephen Kofer, founder of the Coalition to Legalize MMA in New York. Stephen, welcome to the MMA Fight Corner here in Las Vegas. How you doing, man? Hey, what's going on? Now, at the UFC 155 post-fight scrum, Dana White said again that 2013 is the year for MMA in New York. What are your thoughts on that, Stephen? I actually think... Um He's, for once, not boasting. <laughs> we have a pretty good shot this year, you know? Usually he says this every year, but this year he's actually a little closer to the truth, in my opinion. Well, what's different about this year? Uh, there's, there's a couple of factors that are, that are uh, different uh, aside from the, the normal stuff, but mainly a couple of the, the serious uh, opposition members in the legislature have retired. Um, the... The lawsuit, the federal lawsuit, is plugging away, and that's keeping the issue alive. And I think if the lawsuit gets any traction, you know, legislators don't usually like people to go do an end run around them. So, um, you know, and plus the biggest factor, I think, is that because of that federal lawsuit, uh, New York State had to admit that amateur mixed martial arts was legal in New York. So they've been allowing amateur, uh, the amateur version of the sport in New York in an unregulated fashion. So I don't see how they could ban the professional version and and allow the unregulated amateur version. Yeah, I know. That was my next question, because amateurs completely allowed, no issues whatsoever, but it's not under any sanctioning board, okay? So there's no regulation, there's no testing, all right? The only basic rule is you don't get paid. So it's much more dangerous than having it sanctioned and having somebody like the UFC or an organization come in than to allow these amateur fights, yeah, absolutely. The you know, I mean, there you know, the amateur shows in New York. There's a whole spectrum of what's going on. There's everything from completely unregulated, quote unquote, underground fights to promoters that are trying to emulate it, uh, the sanctioned amateur shows that go on in New Jersey, for example. And then you've got everything in between. So um, you know, if you're going to fight amateur in New York, you got to do your research and find out who you're getting involved with. Yeah, it's definitely dangerous. Now, when you have like a, a lady like Melvina Lathan, who's so for it and, and so really wants to get this sport legalized in the state of New York, yet you have the politicians that have just co- constantly putting it on the back burner. And, and like you said, that they actually had to come out and, and kind of admit their wrongdoing. Um, how is it that that's allowed, that these guys can get away with it? It's, it's basically criminal. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's corrupt, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, Melvina is very supportive of legalizing MMA, professional MMA in New York, but, um, you know, she's not up there in Albany voting. So um, it's really, it really comes down to a few very powerful people in Albany who have final say of, of what, um, what gets to the floor for a vote and with what does not. So, I mean, if you've been paying attention, you know that in the Senate it's passed the legislation has passed for the last three years in a row, but it's been kind of stonewalled in the Assembly. Um, so I think the Assembly this year where we had those, those old-timers retiring, you know, Bob Riley, the one that everybody knows, um, Sheldon Silver is the speaker who, who decides what goes to the floor. So it really still comes down to him. And what are, what are you guys doing? I know you're doing a lot out there in New York right now to, to get uh, MMA legalized. What, what's, what are you guys doing? What's the campaign about? Well, essentially, uh, for the last couple of years, we've done a lot of the stuff that you'd expect from a coalition like us. We've staged rallies and letter campaigns and 
and uh, things like that. But I think the two big things that make us different are that we produced a, a feature documentary called New York Mixed Martial Arts, and that actually, um, I can't tell you with who, but it was picked up by a big distribution company and is planned to be distributed uh, nationally uh, this year, early this year. So I think that'll go a long way towards educating the public. Uh, the second thing that we're doing this year that's different in the past is rather than do another rally, because we also believe that we're really close to, to getting uh, legal pro-MMA this year, is we decided to host uh, an association of boxing commissions approved judge and referee training here in New York for the first time ever uh, with the goal of sort of building up the, the foundation so when we do get the green light, we're going to have a whole host of trained officials ready to go. That's cool. Uh, I, I think you have one guy here, Phil Devine, who'd be perfect for that. Yeah, actually, it's really funny. I used to work uh, in New York. I used to, I know Melvina very well, and I used to work with uh, Randy Gordon, who was one of the guys actually who banned the sport years ago, and now is one of the biggest proponents of getting it legalized. Now that you know the rules have been in place, it's no longer no holds barred. So this has been uh, something that, because being a New Yorker, we've been trying for years to just get this noticed. You know, you talk yeah, about absolutely. It. I mean, it's not just us. You know, we we the coalition only started a few years ago, and there've been people uh, fighting for this since since it was banned in '97. So, um, but I, I I do feel really optimistic for this year, and uh, you know, this this is why we sort of decided to take a different approach and offer some some uh, some practical things to do, like this referees and judges training instead of another rally in front of a politician's office. You know. Let, 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 let's uh, let's jump back a little bit. I want to know more about about the movie. So yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, first, is there a website? What's the name of the film? Is there a website? And then tell me all about it. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, the movie the movie premiered at the Bronx Week Film Festival in in 2011, uh, and then we you know we did the sort of normal independent film thing. We screen we actually screened at Fight Summit last year out by you guys in Vegas, and uh, we screened at the first ever. We actually coordinated it with Madison Square Garden, the first ever uh, mixed martial arts documentary film festival at Madison Square Garden. You sure that uh, they weren't they weren't picketing of, outside? <laughs> they uh, weren't pi- they weren't picketing outside telling it was illegal to show the movie at Madison Square Garden? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I think that'd be the wrong place to pick it. You know? Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, so that's where it got the attention of our distributor, uh, they contacted us, and uh, so we're just waiting uh, on a few nuts and bolts to get finished, and the movie will hopefully be out by April um, on all digital media. So this will be like X, Xbox, you know, PlayStation, um, iTunes, and, and uh, Amazon, and you know, Netflix, Netflix yeah. and stuff like that. But for people who want to know more about the movie, you can go to nymmafilm.com, and that will have all the information. Awesome. Now, well, the, the the distributing house that picked it up. Give me a clue here. Like, uh, does it rhyme with Paramount? Like, like just say <laughs> say something that it rhymes with. Name. Yeah, like like Maramount or Box or, or you no, know. No, no, no. It doesn't rhyme with any of those. But uh, Smyans Bay. Who yet? Because um, you know I'm not allowed to. But I I can tell you that they've distributed some really big films. Boo! In the, in the independent and documentary. Area. I'm just going to keep on going, man, until you give me a clue. I'm not going to stop here. Well, you know what? It's, this, is the, this is the perfect time for it to come out, because if you've noticed on places like Netflix, they are every documentary that has come out in the last few years, such great heights with um, John Fitch. There's the one fighter, occu- occupation fighter, the George St. Pierre and um, David Lewisa one. They're all on Netflix now, and they're now hitting like a ton of bricks, and it's coming out like wildfire, and this is the perfect time for this. Perfect time. You know, and Phil, you bring up a good point before that it's criminal that MMA is not sanctioned in New York right now. But let me ask you a question, Stephen. Has there been a study as far as an economic issue, how much money it would bring to the state of New York? Yeah, sure. Uh, Zufa did commission a study that, you know, uh, quoted the many millions that uh, two UFCs bring to New York. But I actually think that underestimates the actual number because Take New Jersey, for example, right? Last year, well, now in 2011, there were 45 sanctioned mixed martial arts events in New Jersey, and only one of them was a UFC. So that's a lot of money that people are not factoring into uh, their analysis of the financial benefit of, of having a legalized 
sport in the state. Is there any number that's been thrown out there? A roundabout? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have to go back and look at the Zufa study, but you're talking, you know, you're they're estimating about $20 million for two UFC shows in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm sure if you can, uh, I can dig up those numbers for people that are interested. Yeah, that would be yeah. insane. Now, um, I know... Uh, you, we're off into the future, and I don't want you to make any predictions, but I know that next year, Super Bowl is going to be in New York, and UFC always does big Super Bowl weekend here in Vegas. If they were to do a card, Super Bowl weekend, at Madison Square Garden, oh my God. what, I mean, just how do you not just pass that, the, the assembly pass that right then and there, as in what that could do for the economy, in the, especially after Hurricane Sandy and what that area is going through. Oh, yeah. The, the, the influx of money would be outrageous. outrageous. It would be massive. And, uh, you know, it would, I, first of all, my gym is two blocks away from Madison Square Garden, so I'd be like in heaven, you know. But it's, uh, <laughs> I think it would be ridiculous not to do it. And I, I really think this year, I mean, even – uh, there was a recent article in the New York Daily News just from a few days ago that actually quoted Sheldon Silver, the guy who's been our big roadblock, as saying that uh, he sees the support increasing uh, for it in the Assembly, which to me means he's trying to cover his bases. It's not a great statement, but it's it's the kind of statement where later on, if they approve it, he could come out and say, yeah, I saw it coming. But then it's also the kind of statement where he could turn around and say, but the support is not there yet. But I, I personally think we're going to get it this year. Yeah. Do you think, do you guys, and I know you guys, you, I got two New Yorkers here, and I got a New Yorker on the phone, so I know you guys want to see the, the Super Bowl card happen in New York. Hallelujah. I, of course, Hallelujah. am in Las Vegas, and I want to see MMA in New York at all costs, soon, hopefully, in Madison Square Garden, but I don't want to lose our Super Bowl card. I'm mad because I lose a lot of cards. I used to get every card here in town, and now, you know, they go to other places, so, so it bothers me. But do you think that that would be um, too much? For a lot of people to, in New York, because it's such a big money weekend that, you know, trying to go to the Super Bowl and the UFC is like people don't have enough money to do both of those things? Well, I don't know. I think, you know, diehard fans will do what they can do. I mean, not, not uh, just money, not, not to, not to cut to, you off. I would go to a big UFC over the Super Bowl. I mean, <laughs> yeah, me, yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Amen. Bowl, Amen. So Amen. I, think, I think fans will they'll have to choose, but there's plenty of fans to go around for both, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean necessarily the uh, the money alone, but I mean just too time. Much, yeah, too much stuff with the with the what goes into the 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 Super Bowl preparation and, and the the backup events that happen and all the events that are there and televised things and TV stuff to do that the same week as a UFC. It seems like they'd be almost competing with each other. Well, let's be one hundred percent honest. Really, when was the last Super Bowl that was that exciting? Usually, uh. Super Bowls are pretty boring. They never live up to the hype. UFC and MMA usually does. So I think you'd have a perfect hangover relief right there on Sunday is the Super Bowl. That's that's yeah, perfect. Sure. UFC would have to get some uh, – they'd have to compete with the commercials. That's where they would really have to compete. Yeah, exactly. right. That's the, actually, that's the only reason I actually watch the Super Bowl is for the commercials. Most people. That's really most people. Actually, Joey, I think they would probably feed each other. I think there would be people who would go to both events if they were going to the Super Bowl. I do. Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's taken so long. Obviously, you know, the the politics behind it all. But from I remember just walking down the street and UFC 111. UFC 111, they had a press conference at Radio City. There was a line around the corner. UFC 78, they actually had a view, or 79, they had a viewing party at Madison Square Garden. Like 5,000 people showed up wow. to watch it on a screen. Not even, you know, just to get that feeling that, hey, yeah. I'm at Madison Square Garden watching the UFC on a screen. But 5,000 people showed up. Imagine if you actually had an event there. Yeah, people just, are starving for it right now. I think everybody would go out in force. I think it would be great. And, Stephen, I hope you're right. I hope this is the year. Yes. Yeah, I hope, I hope so, too, man. If I, if I could, if, if you don't mind, just give the website for the, for the uh, MMA training if anybody's interested. It's Please do. NYMMATraining.com. And what's your gym? Too, you said your gym is two blocks away from Madison Square. What's the name of your gym? Oh, my gym is called New York Combat Sambo. Uh, the the website is nycombatsambo dot com. Beautiful, beautiful. We urge all the listeners to go check it out. Uh, Stephen, we want to thank you so much for joining us here on the MMA Fight Corner. Also, last year at this time, Dana White was on the show. 
guaranteeing that uh, MMA will be sanctioned in New York in 2012. It was last January. So hopefully you're the right one joining us this January <laughs> and we get uh-huh. MMA sanctioned in New York this year. So and when it is sanctioned, you come back on our show and we'll talk about it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. It's been great. All, All right, right brother. Steven. Anytime. We look forward to seeing that movie as well. All right. Yeah. The M- the MMA Fight Corner is sponsored by Fast Cash Title Loans with three great locations at rates at 9.95%. How can you go wrong? Competitors tell you they're giving half off, but half off of what? Our man Mike Tachara will not be beat or run to sold. Call Fast Cash's new location at 702-822-4456. Tell them that Billy sent you and receive $50 off your first payment. I have to tell you about an amazing, amazing experience. I've been telling you about it now for the past couple weeks here in Las Vegas. I recently had my LASIK procedure done to correct my eyes, and my eyes are getting better every day after the procedure and now I'm better than 2020 I don't need glasses anymore and I'm telling you it's like a miracle Dr. Rothman and his staff were incredible through the whole process and extremely professional and I urge anyone who has thought about laser to speak with my my man I call him my man Dr. Rothman he offers a free consultation and 50 percent 50% off premium LASIK when you mention my name, Billy Mira, and 0% financing available. Call 702-636-2010. You'll be delighted you did. I know I was, and I can actually see now. I see Joey, unfortunately, (laughs) (laughs) and you will be glad as well. When we come back, Beck Hyatt joined us on the line, Heidi's Hit List, and so much more. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call. 4100. That's 685 4100. I can help the next customer over here. Oh, thank you. Hi. Wow, that's a lot of books. Let's see. How to keep your child safe. Child proofing your home. Child proofing your yard. Child proofing your in laws' home and yard. Well, I'm guessing you have a little one at home. Yeah. Well, it looks like you must take good care of her. Oh, thank you. Now, let's see. Parents' Guide to Safe Toys. That's a really good one. Parents' Guide to Safe Foods. Parents' Guide to Safe Safety Products. Parents' Guide to Parenting Guides. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and other safety tips. Of all the things you can read about keeping your child safe, the most important is attached to the back of their car seat. Read the instruction manual and learn to use the latch system. It makes it easier to be sure your child's car seat is installed correctly. Parents' Guide to Telling Other Parents How to Raise Their Kids. To learn more, go to safercar.gov. Anchor, tether, latch. The next generation of child safety. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com. Your all-access pass to everything MMA. Dan Patrick Show. So what if they're rubbing it in? Dan Patrick Show. He's the new head coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats, Tommy Tuberville, who joins us on the program. Well, I'm just trying to understand why the recruits would say this, that if the conversation was they're asking you about your future at Texas Tech. No, there was none whatsoever talk about that. Wasn't it wasn't on the table. No, they were specific, though. One of the recruits was that uh, ask you about your future there, and you mentioned you'd coached uh, Florida, Auburn, and recruited Ray Lewis, and then he said you excused yourself, and then you didn't come back. That's according to one of the recruits. No, they ask questions when you're standing there. You know, I, I don't know where any of that came from. I mean, that was just, uh, I'm sure that, you know, after after fact, uh, most of these kids haven't been recruited before, and uh, they might think that the head coach is supposed to hang around them for 48 straight hours, and uh, that's not what happened. The Dan Patrick Show. I probably could have done it better. It's the Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings at 6 on Fox Sports Radio 920. 
Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu. Oh, and I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know. It helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. We gotta talk about this. This is JT the Brick with Tom Looney. And now, the 2012 winner of the Heisman Memorial Trophy is Johnny Manziel. Looney, can you get that voice job for that lady? <laughs> can you oh. do that? I think you'd be great. Yeah, I, I heard that and I saw that and I thought, oh, I'd love to do that. Did you say your name was? This is JT the Brick with Tom Looney. You probably have your own agenda. JT the Brick. Overnights from 10 to 3 on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. We have ignition. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Joey Varner, and Heidi Fang. Uh, man, we had some good stuff before the break. And we're going to continue that right now. We have uh, on the line, I told you, uh, we have an interview with Invicta Fours, Beck Hyatt fighting this Saturday in the main event against Carla Espraza. underground today for your story i'm sure you've seen it uh and for our listeners out there who, who don't know what that is please explain to them um why you don't want to get knocked out <laughs> i don't want to pee my pants <laughs> <laughs> and leave it to phil to bring this up this is a guy who's woken up many nights peeing his pants <laughs> that's okay because that's not no one sees it it's not in front of a huge crowd and pay-per-view but i don't i don't want to wake up Pee in my pants. It's a little bit embarrassing. Okay, not to get too personal, but have you ever had a wild night on the town and woke up the next morning with wet drawers? Hell no. <laughs> She's a lady, Joe. Come on. <laughs> she, I love her accent, too. I'm not yeah. going to lie. It's awesome. I got to admit. Um, everyone loves the Australian accent here. Everyone 
looks at me funny, but then like, oh, cool, you're from Australia. <laughs> do do Australians like in in uh, Australia? Do they love American accents? Yeah, yeah, that's probably the, that's the first thing I commented on when I got here that I love the American accent. And tell him back, especially the New York American accent. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> You got crickets. You diss me live on the air, baby. <laughs> cricket, cricket, cricket. Well, back. Oh, uh, we just recently just finished up uh, tough smashes in Australia, and we've seen. I mean, the the excitement and the hunger that those fighters had reminded a lot of us of the first season of the Ultimate Fighter here in America. The, not only the shows that they're putting on, but the gyms that are popping up. How big is it getting? Um, it's not big yet. It's, it's still really small, and it's still it's getting there. But like when a big organization like that um, pops up and the opportunity like that arises, um, they come hungry. And it's, it's, I think it's because we don't get these opportunities very often. So um, yeah, Australian fighters definitely come come to please and come hungry. What was the just to touch back on the tough smashes again? What was the, what was the uh, the media like in Australia surrounding the show? I mean, was was the was the show everywhere? Was there press all about it? Was it like the talk of the town, or did it kind of fly under the radar? Um, it flew under the radar a bit, actually. It wasn't as big as I thought it would be. Especially the the finale wasn't advertised the way we thought it would be. That sucks. Yeah, it really does. Really does, but you tomorrow night you got a title shot. Very excited for the fight, and this is also not only you know are you getting the first shot at the strawweight title, but this is the first time Invictus actually you're gonna have to pay to watch it, right? Oh, why they went to pay per view? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. They went yeah, to pay per view. First time they've had to pay per view, but I think it's about time they they they're doing the right thing, and it's not like it's really expensive. It's only like seven dollars, so I think um it's like less than a dollar a fight, so I think it's worth it. Now, who do you train with down in Australia? Um, Impact MMA in um, Kapalabar in Brisbane. Uh, who are some of the people on the team? Um, I train with Pat Promrenka, who's actually fighting um, Grant Blackwell soon for the title. He was on Tough Smashes. Okay. Um, and I fight with Jacob. I uh, train with Jacob Mahoney. We call him J Money. He's a little <laughs> he's <laughs> he's a little beast, and he beats me up all the time. <laughs> um, and J Jay Cobain. He's a 77 kilo fighter. What's that in pounds? <laughs> that 170, you, you, 170 you, fighter, and he's he's a beast as well. So there's we got some good fighters coming out of um, out of our team in Australia. But um, you can't ever ask us a math question. What's that in pounds? <laughs> Everyone just had the dumbest blank look on their face. Like we got crickets again. Like uh, I could hear uh, the Jeopardy music <laughs> playing in the background, and it would have went on for an hour if you didn't keep talking. <laughs> so we, Sorry. No, no, no. That's awesome, though. But um, do you feel like it gives you an advantage? You know, uh, you know, because you see a lot of the, in the states. There's, there's a lot more MMA gyms now, and a lot more women actually. And so over there in Australia, you're training. It sounds like with mainly guys. Is that is that something that gives you an advantage coming into your fights? Um, I think so. I think because I train with the, the bigger guys, they're always got weight on me, and they've got strength, and they're always more athletic as well. So um, it definitely gets me ready and. When I get in the cage with a girl my size, it's um you just throw them around. It's like, is that all you got? Like I'm used to getting pounded on by, you know, so, what's a pound? I can't, I'm going to confuse you with kilos again. <laughs> <laughs> the guys I train with are 155ers, so um yeah, they've got a bit of weight on me. What are your strengths? What are you bringing into this cage that that uh that Carla has to be you know look out for? Um, I think she's got to look out for my my striking. I've got fast hands. Um. And I think I'm hungry. I'm hungrier than her. I've got I've got a chip on my shoulder, and everyone reckons I'm going to lose. So um, when I've got something to prove, it's it's a dangerous thing. Hell yeah, yeah. And looking, I mean, you look at your record. You, I mean, obviously Carla's more experienced. She's been around longer. But you've only been fighting professionally for a little over a year. You lost your first fight, um, a head kick KO, which uh, I, I can understand not wanting to pee yourself. Um, <laughs> keep my cool and um 
and fight, fight smart. Don't just go in there trying to knock their head off. Um, and we worked on a lot of things since that fight and just keep improving and working on all my all my flaws and stuff. So we just, we're just always looking at what I'm doing wrong and trying to improve that way. So I think that's helped a lot. And like I said, you've only been fighting pro for over a year. What got you into the sport? Um, I recently got into the sport just to lose weight. I used to be quite overweight, and um, and that's where I met my husband, and he had an MMA gym. In, um, we used to live in Tasmania, which is like a small little island off of Australia. So um, yeah, we had a little gym going on down there, and I got into it and pretty much just fell in love from there. This is a random left field question, but uh, are there a bunch of Tasmanian devils on Tasmania? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where they're from, but they're all like they're all in captivity now because they all they're too vicious and have diseases and stuff. So we stay away from them. <laughs> and they don't spin. Do they really look like the the? I've never seen one in real life. Um, they're not brown. That's for sure. <laughs> they're black and white. They're vicious looking. <laughs> you know, it's funny. She says she's only professional now for a year. Yeah. A year now, and how is it watching the evolution of women's MMA here in the States? It's got to be pretty exciting, being new oh, to it. It's been amazing. I never thought um, we'd see women in, in the USC. That's, that's for one, and that's um, happened, and Invicto is like the best thing that's happened to women's MMA, and I'm just excited to fight on, it, on their show and be the first Aussie to fight there as well. So cool. Yeah, absolutely. Wish you the best of luck. It's uh, I'm very much looking forward to this card. I loved Invicta 1, 2, and 3. F- you know, 4, I do not mind spending any money to watch the, the, these fights. It, they're, every single one of them has been amazing, and, and tomorrow remember, will be no different. Remember, everybody, it's $7.95 to watch. Starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So check it out on InvictaFC.com. Saturday, January 5th. Don't miss it. So, Beck, we wish you all the best tomorrow night. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks right so on, much girl. for joining us. I'm re- I, I really am looking forward to this Invicta card. Like I said, every one of them has been, you know, top-notch. And when we had Shannon Knapp on a few weeks ago, she even just look at the finishing rate. Look at the finishing rates on all of the Invicta cards. I think, like, on... 14 fights they usually have. One or two will go to the decision. The rest are finishes. Well, it's, it's amazing now. What is this? this is their fourth fight fourth card. card. And how much of the numbers have grown? Heidi, you'd probably know this. Well, how much she, the she was on with us, right? She didn't disclose it. She, she didn't want to disclose it because, remember, Joey, she, she said, got flamed. She, yes. she, she took a lot of heat. Yeah, when she first announced how many viewerships they had, how many people clicked on it on the web, the, the haters came out in herds, man. They're like, oh, what's that? What's that? So she's actually pulled back since then. She doesn't want to keep revealing the numbers, but she did say they've grown exponentially each show. So uh, I think they're going to do very well tomorrow night with, the, with going the pay-per-view route for the first time. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll, absolutely. I'll definitely be watching. That's for sure. Now, before we get into Heidi's hit list, I want to just go back to UFC 155 real quick and talk about some of those fights that we miss. He, he, he wanted to go. And before we go back, I wanted to uh, just mention again know. that I was 8-4 and four of my picks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's exactly well, well, what he well, wanted to well, say. Well, now that Mr. Joseph Varner has brought it up, <laughs> um, I am 8-4 and four, just along with Mr. Varner himself. You, you so. tied me. You tied me. I did tie and then Armand. And, and if I remember correctly, everybody thought I was crazy for my opening statement saying I thought that fight was going to go the distance. So I have to reiterate that. We didn't think you were crazy for saying that. We just thought you were crazy for actually, like, you know, pretending like you knew it was was going on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you know, if, if you looked at it, like this was weird. Armando and I, we our picks were just so god awful that I think, like, I think if I had my one year old niece who can't even point yet point at the pages, I would have had better picks. <laughs> I mean, she can't, she wouldn't you. even be able to. She'd be pointing over the side, and I'd be like, okay, uh, Brunson, all right, you got it. Yeah. You know, but by the way, let's just really talk about that. One, 155, real quickly, sum it up in, <laughs> in two words, Miller Lozon. Card wow. saver. Wow. Right there. Wow. Card no, saver. I, I don't agree with that, uh, man. The main I, card. Of course he doesn't. <laughs> no, because look, okay, that fight was awesome. Amazing. The main event be- was awesome as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm choking over here. Um, you know, it was exciting. In hindsight, it wasn't exciting because because Kane just whooped the hell out of JDS. But every time he stood up, we thought JDS could catch him, could knock him out. You know, and that made it exciting. The crowds, the the Brazil Mexico rivalry. You know, the crowd was chanting for JDS. Then the Mexican side was chanting for Kane. So that was exciting. The two fight killers were the Belcher and the Okami, and then the the uh, Bronson fight. Those were those were killers. But the whole undercard of undercard that was, was amazing. Awesome. Undercard it was, was awesome. amazing. So you had two crappy fights on, on on the card, basically. Well, I don't three. 
in my opinion. Uh, I, I'm I'm calling the the Philippou and the Boach fight. The only reason I think it's crap is because of the fact that Boach got headbutt, poked in the eye, and everyone's talking about Philippou the next big thing. Dude, he took he took advantage of a great situation. Boach was never the same. You saw it once he got poked in that eye, he couldn't see a lick for a round and a half, and dude showed a lot of heart staying in there. But it was just sloppy. It was ugly. I just I didn't find it. And he Brunson, is sloppy and ugly. And though. Brunson and Lieben looked like they were fighting underwater. Yes, that was horrible. That was just an off. And Dana even said it during the pro- post fight press conference that Joe Silva was going to be giving it to him. He's like, Joe Silva's going to let me hear this because I'm the one that said Lieben go on the main event. They actually had another fight booked for, to start that fight, the, the card. It might have been Wineland and Pickett, and Joe Silva you know, and Dana had a disagreement, and Dana switched it and put Lieben on. I don't think it was, Lieben was the mistake. I think Brunson was the mistake. Lieben didn't make it a boring fight. I mean, he was trying to fight. Now, granted, he did, like you said, look underwater, sluggish and slow and lethargic, but he was trying to scrap. Bunsen, Brunson, 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 the not, no, the not burner. Brunson, the not burner. That should be his nickname. No, he's the one who made a boring fight. Eight, eight days notice. I, I understand him going in there and try, just trying to pick up the win, but like Dana said, the whole fight, he was looking at the clock. Yeah. He was just waiting to get out of there. So I mean that you know that was just because, like you said, the the prelims they were they were good fights. They were a lot of fun. But then it was kind of like you had that like show killer right in the middle with those two, and then the rest of it. It just it. I'll tell you that place erupted. That first round of Lozon Miller, oh, and, and they forgot all about every other fight that went on because those two guys brought it. The other there was night. only two. You're making it sound like there was a ton. There was it, only two. Hold on, and, and you're complaining about the Boach Philippu fight because your pick was wrong. No, that no, fight was not exciting. At all. Boach, not Boach at all. beat his ass. He beat the crap no, out of Philippu. He, beat I mean, his excuse ass. me, Philippu. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it? Dyslexia, whatever it is. Backwards stuff. Um, it's opposite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm stuttering. Exactly. Bringing up my childhood, man. I got a, I got a sp- 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 speech impediment. No, um, but Philip looked great. The fight was exciting. He got him down. He stopped him. He cut him open. It was bloody. It was, you know, it was it was a grimy fight. It, it was exciting. Really? Like, I just, you, you saw Boach go in for the takedown, couldn't get it, and was so slow. And, and they it got just, beat on. It, it was they just beat on. It was just That, was made, that it made it was exciting, sloppy. though. Him beating on Boach made it exciting. Uh. So the only two... Unexcited, and you're uh because your pick was was, it has was to do with it. Yeah, it, it was Philip who you'd be, you'd be as excited not, as me. Not, not true at all. Not true at all. I I don't go and li- live and die by my picks, so I'm all good. Well, if obviously, I, with with the picks you with your record in picks, you 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 be no, dead. No, no, no. Phil's I, I, actually got a great percentage. A great it was, percentage. It was no, bad this week. We, we, you was, bad we don't this know. Week. We don't know that because this is the first documented case. That is true. <laughs> that that so, is true. Phil's Phil's that like, is true. I might be talking out of turn here, Phil. I, 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 had you, fact, but I may be wrong, baby. I'm, I'm like the first guy with SARS right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's the first documented well, listen, what case. Is, yeah. What is everybody's? What is everybody's overall grade at UFC 155? I thought it was a good card, man. I thought it was it really was great. It was decent. B plus. D plus. B plus. All right. Almost man, an A. Hold on, Phil. J- so just three no, boring <laughs> fights. They just don't want to get hold this on, up. Stop, no, no. Stop, hold on. One second. One second. I say two boring fights. You say two boring and one sloppy fight out of twelve fights. So nine great fights. And three oh, okay fights? Great. I wouldn't say great. I, I thought I expected more out of the Wineland Pickett fight. You it was still both. a good you fight. It was still a good fight, but, but I expected more. Pickett dropped the ball. Uh, okay. Yeah, he did. He did. But it, Wineland, actually, no, I'm sorry. Pickett did it. Wineland. Wine, Wineland didn't pull off. Wasn't Wineland. He, no, he, he was, was in the first round. It, Second and third, he stopped fighting. He, he, he was... It was much more tactical than I thought with these two guys. In the first round, Wineland looked awesome. And in the second, third, he stopped fighting. Because he, he, he realized he had the win. He dropped him twice. He's like, I, I just got to ride this out. Yeah, yeah. This, but that the fight still was exciting, but continue. Um, let's see. <laughs> what else? Uh, well, ju- Miles Jury, I have to say, I was very impressed with Miles Jury. Wow, Ju- blew my mind. Very impressed with Miles, Ju- Miles Jury's performance. Did not see that coming at all. Owned. I expected Owned. the exact opposite. I expected exactly what Miles Jury did to Michael Johnson. I thought Michael Johnson was going to do to Jury. But Jury, man, he just showed evolution, improvement. He showed he belongs. He belongs to the guy who's on a terror, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, overall, I, I give it a B. So, yeah, I said, I said B plus A. Yeah, I, I give it plus. a B. I mean, B plus, but, like, I, I was expecting an A. I really was. But that always happens. When you expect something, it never delivers. All right, well. What's that, Armando laughing at? I don't know. What's up, Chuckles? That's the most important part of that whole card. 
What, What's what, that, Armando? Telemundo. I mean, come on. Game winning? No, not you, but. Oh. Varner and Gallard? No. What's the most you important part? Uh, what well, is tell it? Tell us. Enlighten us, though, great one. With his luchador mask. And oh. Oh, would you uh, stop? Oh, oh my God. God. The you, should play, you should play some mariachi music when you say something like that. <laughs> Give me some Volver going on here. All right, right all right. <laughs> all right, right now, let's get to Heidi's hit list of some of the latest MMA news. Give me some little intro to that, Armando. Give me something. Where's my bumper, Billy? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> all right, uh, I'll give you a bumper, baby. Oh, I bet. Uh, here it is okay. right now. Heidi with her hit list. <laughs> well, we'll start off with the UFC on Fox 7 targeting San Jose, uh, the HP Pavilion for the April 20th event. I don't believe they've been back there for quite some time, so it'll be great to see them in San Jose. <laughs> also, uh, Dan Miller and Jordan Mean. He's uh, being welcomed to the Octagon at UFC 158, that welterweight fest that's going to be in Montreal, headed up by Nick Diaz and GSP. So we have uh, Jordan Mean out of there. Yeah, we I had like Jordan. Maybe yeah, mm-hmm. we had Jordan. Good, good fight, Jordan Mean and Dan Miller. Yeah. Uh, World Series of Fighting, they're supposed to have their second event in February, and Paulo Filo's been added to their roster of fighters. Very excited about this if he's got his head screwed on straight. Yeah, that dude's nuts. Seven nuts. Ways from, yeah. Guy had a conversation with Jesus while fighting Chael Sonnen. Guy straight had, up in the, in the cage, had a conversation yeah. with Jesus. Had a conversation with a tree afterwards. <laughs> hey, man, he had a celebrity phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's home. Yeah, right. In uh, Bellator news, we have Rad Martinez versus Shabalat Shamaleev rescheduled for the featherweight tournament final in February. That will be February 21st in Utah. That's uh, Rad Martinez's hometown or close to it, actually. He's from Utah, so that should be exciting to see. Which I'll, is- give you, I'll give you 20 bucks if you can say that three times fast. Shabalat Shamaleev, Shabalat Shamaleev, Shabalat Shamaleev. Oh! Damn, that, that pay me! Impressive. Uh, you know, hold on, yeah, well, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Pay her. Pay, pay her. Whip out that pay, her. pay her. We're all here. You got witnesses that, in the room. Now's where Billy's like, I will. Be, radio, but guys. you know what? Though? I can It'll tell, be in your paycheck this week. I can tell <laughs> like, when she was getting ready to do this, she must have like done that exact thing to say the name right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did. <laughs> and, and you good know what? Good for, good for Bellator because Rad Martinez, the reason he had to pull out of his last fight was because he's taking care of his father who's sick. He needs to stay around him at all times. They're booking the fight near him. And I, I like that they're doing that. Good for them. Strike Force has finally found an opponent for Pat Bam Bam Healy. He's going to face Kurt Hollobaugh as his uh, opponent... Yeah. Did you and say Holaba or do you say who Laba? <laughs> I think just Armando sh- said who and it got mixed up. And just a shade under a week too. All right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so that's of course Strike Force. Finally, final maybe event. we'll see a Healy exciting fight. <laughs> uh, ooh. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> silly. Our own Jay Heron. He's got a new opponent for the February second UFC 156 Super Bowl card. He'll face Tyrone Woodley at a Wow! Wow! T. T. Wood making the the move to the UFC. I'm hoping to see a a, a, a replay of Marquardt Woodley. With oh, Jay I was Heron. gonna Jay was... Heron being the Marquardt. Jay Heron throwing nasty uppercuts and Woodley's head looked like a Pez dispenser. Yes. It may very well happen. Hey, it it. The the fight with Eric Silva I thought was a great fight. I think this is this is better. A, a better fight for Jay as far as wi- you know. Jay can win this fight pretty pretty handily. I think I think you can pick him apart. Yeah, just just stay long, strong. You know, lots of punches, kicks, punches and bunches, uppercuts that snap your head back like a Pez dispenser. I am <laughs> like a Pez dispenser. Like, seriously, that was his head. It, it reminded me of Shogun and Mark Coleman. Oh, yeah. Remember that? In like the third round it was, he hit him so hard, I thought his head was going to fly over the cage. When, when, Sh- when Shulkin started to fight. Yeah, because that, that was another one that we were like, oh, what, what happened, happened here? <laughs> oh, whoa, jinx. Uh, <laughs> you guys owe each other a drink. So, but uh, really quickly, uh, I know we don't have a lot of time left, right? Did, did you have any more? No, on the that was it. I know we, uh, I wanted to say. All right, uh, Heidi. Finally, uh, we, this past weekend, uh, New Year's Eve, Japan had MMA again. Oh yeah! And it was, oh yes, it was, indeed. It was actually it was a pretty good card. I thought Dream Eighteen was was definitely one of those cards that, if they keep it up, it may be on the rise again in Japan. You never know, which would be pretty cool. We want to thank Stephen Kofer and Beck Hyatt, and as always, you the fight fans. Remember to visit, visit MMAFightCorner.com for all your breaking MMA news and exclusive interviews. We'll see you right back here inside the MMA Fight Corner next Friday at 5 p.m. Till then, be safe, everybody. You're listening to Fox Sports Radio 920.